this is one of the door cards before and the fuzziness you see on it, that's the old cotton wadding you see the water damage at the bottom and what we're doing is all the holes like these funny shaped ones up here and all where they've rotted out and they're not great we've made a pattern on the new board as I've shown before which we then transferred over to this new one which isn't warped and is all nice and smart and we're just working our way through and cutting out these various shapes we don't have um, a fret saw or a band saw so we're relying on a drill and a jigsaw and just sort of basic home DIY tools because that's all you really need and then when we're done we'll have this all ready to go together like the other ones this is one of the door cards that we already cut out so you can see these are the little brackets that hold it onto the sides and they're the holes after they've been trimmed. Those are the key hole types, so you drop it down when that's done. On the front face of it, you've got the back of the rivets, and they go nice and flat. The little legs actually hammer into the plywood so they don't show up through your fabric layers. And then the top edge is just sanded with a slight bevel, and that helps the fabric ease over. This is actually very useful on the new plywood because it's ever so slightly thicker than the original. Then it's time to drill, well, it was time to drill the holes out. This is how we did it. And that's Pat with the big hole saw that we've got in the battery drill. And drill roughly the size that you need for the larger areas. There are more accurate ways to do it, but we don't have the tools. And then for the little keyhole bit of it, you use a smaller drill and you drill most of the material out. And that makes the jigsaw work easier later. And here he is with the jigsaw, just tidying those edges up so we have a nice clean finish. And after all the drilling and the cutting, there's a little bit of tear out, so it goes over everything with the power sander and just get everything tidied up. And then doing that top edge doesn't take very long. Once that's all done, I can then take the old card and in some places there's some pencil lines and these show you where the wadding actually goes. On the bottom edge there isn't, sometimes it's there on the door cards, this one it wasn't. So I'm just peeling that back to find out where that is. Once I've figured that out, the way to mark it on the new one is you line them up top and bottom and then just kind of move it across even enough to put a pen mark in each side and then you just draw a line across the board and that gives you your guidelines for gluing the new fabric on. Easy peasy. With all the supplies together, and we've got everything set out. And these are the little copper bifurcated rivets. And push those through the little keyhole brackets. Make sure when you put them through the door card, you put them through from the right side. A number of times I got that wrong. And you push them in so they're nice and snug. And then turn it over, and before you hammer it, get a screwdriver and just ease the legs out a little bit. And it makes it easier then. Bash it with a hammer against a rock or 
the floor or whatever. Makes it nice and flat, clean off all the dirt afterwards, and they're not too bad to do. The pliers can help get them through. Everything's ever so slightly off size-wise. It's it's not like working with really modern stuff. There seems to be a slight variation on everything, so there's a lot of coaxing and easing to get things to fit in. Yeah, don't actually do it like that. I'm just demonstrating how you do it with a hammer. You can see Pat in the background there, busy doing more sanding. Normally, I wouldn't go to the trouble of setting this up outdoors. It was a faff. And this time of year, you haven't got much hours to work in with daylight, and it gets pretty cold, and then of course you've got to tidy up. But for the purposes of this video, it worked well enough. When you do the brackets, because you can't lay it down flat for the rivets, I find using a brick worked quite well as like a spacer. So with all of your brackets then going on, this is the side that faces the door, so this isn't the side the fabric goes on. All those bits done, it's time to put the cotton wadding on, which is that big pile of white looking fabric there and that was the stuff we're using. You don't need to be careful with measuring this bit, you just need roughly the right size. It's really flexible tolerant stuff. You just want a good sharp pair of scissors. Once you've actually sprayed the contact adhesive on, it's a little bit awkward to lay the fabric because you don't want it to stick in the wrong place. But use those lines that you put in initially as a guide and it goes on very easily. With this particular wadding, there was like, um, almost like a, a gauzy material that had to be peeled off. It just seemed to be there to stop the cotton wadding from sticking to itself. There you go. If you glue it down with that, then it doesn't glue the wadding down. So once you put the piece on, you turn it over and trim the excess off. Do be careful when you put it on as well. It, it does really want to stretch. This stuff's light. It's like cotton wool, pretty much. And the, the old wadding that they used must have been slightly wider than this stuff. Uh, this was the nearest stuff I could find new. I think this came from Bullies. And here I'm just taking a bit I've cut off and then adding a bit on the bottom. When this is done and the fabric's on, you can't see the join. And because this material has no direction, you can put it any which way you want. So it's great for patching if you make a mistake. made a mistake. I forgot to put that felt disc in, so just peel back the cotton wadding, spray some new glue on. And figure out where your little felt buffer goes. That goes behind the either the window winder or the door release, I can't remember which one. And then just glue it back down. Easy peasy. But you can see I've stretched it a little tiny bit on that corner, so you just need to trim the excess off. This is the old fabric, and that's the old wadding, which is very flat. It's not actually glued onto that um, piece of fabric there, it's more just kind of stuck to it by the nature of it. You can see they did use a bit of glue originally, 
um, but I'm choosing not to with reassembly because it wasn't really necessary. It is a little bit tricky to line up because the fabric wants to grab the cotton wool and then the cotton wool wants to peel off and it's a bit of a nuisance. And because this is the old fabric, all of the folds are really well in and it's quite brittle so you've got to be a little bit careful um, to line everything back up. If this was new fabric this bit would take a lot less time. This was incredibly fiddly. I ended up resorting to the tiniest screwdriver that we have, which was necessary for getting all these tiny little tabs out. Now, once you're sure it's all nice and even, you can then get some tacks. And I prefer to start roughly in the middle, um, because if it turns out to be in the wrong place, it's easier to ease everything around and get it lined up. So once I'm comfortable that things are where they should be, and I was fairly comfortable with this one, the cover went on really well. You then get a couple in to hold one side and then move to the other side and get a couple in there and you just sort of don't be tempted to just work in one line on one edge. If you move kind of around the piece as you're doing it, you tend to get um, a, a slightly more even finish, especially when you're reusing old fabric like this. It did take quite a while. This is sped up quite a bit and um, yeah, doing this with a staple gun, it would have gone a lot quicker and having a proper tack hammer would have probably helped as well. I was having to do this with what we've got, which is a trusty old claw hammer and just pushing the tacks in. The tacks have a very, very tiny point on them, so you can actually push them in like a thumb tack, and they hold themselves in place usually, and then you can just knock them home with a hammer. And with all the ones tacked in that need tacks, that's how we look from the other side. The top edge isn't tacked, that's actually glued. So our next piece is the pocket. need a bit more of the cotton wadding because you do have a double layer of cotton wadding that goes inside the pocket piece. Just roughly cut it to size. This doesn't need gluing in, this is actually held in just with the shape of everything, so it's very easy to install. The cotton wool basically sticks to itself and sticks to the back of the fabric. A bit like fuzzy felt really. So with the pockets in place um, you can see there's a little bit of elastic there. Now I could have put new elastic through, I opted to use the original elastic because it was still working as elastic, but it was a, a bit of a battle getting it to go through the holes and not fall apart so it, it took quite a while just to do this bit combination of brute force and pliers and screwdrivers and on one of the other cards we had to use the blunt end of a crochet hook because it was the only thing that would push it through. But you use what you've got. And you just keep sort of poking the end of the elastic until eventually all the loose ends go through and you don't push too much of the wadding through and it's very frustrating. Then the battery died, so this is the following day and this is the front door card. I didn't realise that the camera had stopped recording. You can see the elastic there is tied off on the back. And but to take out the slack in the door pocket, just pulled the old elastic a little bit tighter. Uh, that's the old wadding and then put a knot in the back of the elastic. So peel the old wadding off. You can see a little bit of water damage on this. 
there's not much can be done about that. I'm checking for a hole. A couple of the cards had long nails on the elastic line that held it in. This side didn't seem to at all, so we didn't put them in. First job is new cotton wadding for the inside of the pocket. Same as before. Bit more comfortable working indoors, even if I'm working on the floor. Again, just trimming off the excess material so you're not having to go through too many bits and pieces and keeps everything nice and tidy as you go. You get a feel for this sort of work the more you do it. You learn a little bit more every, every time you do one of these jobs. I'm just checking for fit, making sure it lays flat, feels right. First thing to do is attack right in the middle. I was fairly confident that this piece was where it needed to be. You can see the back shrunk a little bit as well, where it's sort of curved on the edges. And then you go along and just pop some tacks in, and this is the bottom of the map pocket. I'm trying to find somewhere to put the tacks where they weren't constantly in the way was annoying too. And when you turn it over, you can take the edges of the map pocket and fold those over the edge of the door card and then tack those in place. There's between 50 and 70 tacks per door card. You use a lot to get these together. Some of the edges, like this bit, was particularly awkward. It just one of those bits where things had just deformed a little bit, it's where the worst of the water damage was on the old door cards. And there we go, one map pocket in. And it's sitting, it's not too tight, it's not too loose, it's just about right. And the last bit on this one, actually no, the penultimate bit on this one is the tatty old bit of carpet on the bottom. So first of all, check that it's sitting about where it should be. One advantage to the old fabric is you've got the witness marks from where the layers were before. So as with the pocket, start in the middle. And this extra bit was curling up. I, it's old age, it just it's dried out and it's trying to shrink, so to try and prevent it from getting any worse. That bit's not normally tacked down, as far as I can tell, but it doesn't do any harm to give it a helping hand. I'm just checking the fit again. I'm happy that's nice and even and where it wants to be. You just have to make sure when you tack this down that your various layers, when you fold the carpet back down, are hidden so you can't see any of the fabric edges or the stuffing. And there we go. Not that bad really. And then we turn it over and we do the back of the bias binding, that's the bit that goes around the edge of that carpet panel and that's what stops it from fraying. It's kind of a shame that the bottom of this is basically just all frayed out, it's, it's completely shot, but there's enough there to work with to make it tidy for now and when we do the new carpet in the car we'll replace all of the carpets on the bottom of the door cards at the same time. There's some smart forward planning by making that panel the last one and it's the bit that gets the most wear it means 
if it wears out in the future, you can just take that off and put a new one on. And because these are tacks rather than staples, it's a lot easier to remove them. If this was stapled and glued, it would be a nightmare to take apart. Again, it takes quite a while to get all the tacks in. I flipped it over and you, you can see how much from the old water damage has just gone. It's just rotted out and disappeared. So now it's a case of doing the best with what's there and with the fabric being very dark and the tacks being nearly black, they do blend in quite well. And this is well out of the eye line as well, so you don't really see this. So it was just a case of finding the best spots to put a couple of tacks in to tidy up the frilly bits, um, just to visually improve it. One of the extra jobs we're going to do is go around all the edges when the door cards are actually on and color in any of the pale bits of wood you can see sticking out. Um, with a bit of brown dye. So yeah, that's the door card almost finished. There's one more item to go on here. That last item are these little strips of piping. And all they do is they just tidy up that little gap that you get between the edge of the door card and the edge of the door frame and they just make a, a slightly sharper finish to the edges that you don't get if you just... I mean, I've seen door cards like this done where it's just a plain sheet of fabric, they wrap it just in one sheet, and they just look a little bit kit car. This seems to stop that. It's such a small detail, but it does make quite a difference. We're now going through, in some places, um, four layers of fabric, so sometimes the tacks, they, they don't want to go in straight, and you have to put, that's why the pliers are there, you have to pull them out and put them back in again, and give them a wiggle, but you get there eventually, they're not too bad. Again, just going back and forth and just trying to get things to fit naturally best, not trying to force anything into a new shape. That's all of the pieces that need tacking together, back together. A lot of the distortion in the fabric is now gone. So that looks a lot nicer. And that leaves our last item, which is the tabs along the top. So time for some good old fashioned wooden clothes pegs and some Bostic impact adhesive. And you just squidge it on in like a spiral pattern. Leave the tube, because it has a habit of leaking, so leave the tube next to where you want the glue to be on your next piece. And then if it does leak out, you've already got glue on the board and pop your pegs on to hold everything together and just work your way along. This one I didn't need to go from the centre and work out the rest of the fabric on the door card was already under good tension so I could work from one side to the other. Sometimes it's best to work from the middle, in this case it wasn't. And then when that's done you set it aside to dry for a bit. go close up and you can see some of the tacks and the layers and just this I suppose slightly strange combination of new wood and old materials but it's how we wanted to do it and it looked right when everything's back together and on the car again. And 
And there's just one more thing. We're going to iron it. It makes quite a difference. It is a bit crackly as well. Just take your time, a few passes, put the iron on a moderate heat, you don't need steam. The tea towel is there to protect the Rexine from getting too hot and melting, um, or getting burned. And this just helps even out all of the wrinkles and the just just from handling it and putting it on a new board. And any of the sort of stretch marks and weird little creases, it, it just minimizes them. It doesn't make them perfect. There's some are just they're too old, they've been in there too long and you'll never get them out, but it gets the worst of it out and the end result is much more pleasing to the eye in person. behind doing the door card. Um, it would have been quicker if we'd used some modern techniques. There's better glues, there's better fixing techniques like using staples. You can also use new material. We could have used leather or modern vinyl and it would have probably given a, a better finish if you were going the restoration route. The whole point with the Lanchester of course is conservation so that's embracing all of its flaws, embracing all of the wear and tear and 70 odd years of use and abuse. We don't want to get rid of all of that side of thing with the car. And there are very mixed opinions. Some people are quite strongly in favour of us painting the car, returning it to as it was when Lanchester and Barker first created it, put all the materials together. The biggest problem there is finding anybody that produces the right kind of leather, the, the right kind of paint finish. Um, a lot of the modern materials, they are much better quality. They're fire retardant, they're UV stable, you don't have a lot of the issues that you did 70 years ago. But, they look modern. And if you've ever seen an older car with a brand new paint job, and brand new leather interior and, and all the chrome redone to brand new standards, sometimes they look a bit off. So we wanted to avoid that. Also, it's really, really expensive and we're not exactly rich. In fact, I'm pretty sure we're definitely not rich. However, by doing it this way, with the old techniques, we now have nice, new-ish door cards. And I'm quite happy with these. We both are. They smell right. That's another thing with new materials. When you use new materials, you introduce the, the smell of new chemicals and materials that just don't exist in old cars. Old cars, they get old. They decay. And that decay is all part of the appeal. If you're... If you're into cars in any way, and you probably are if you're watching this video, you'll understand that the smell of a car is just as important as the way it looks, the way it drives, how fast it goes, how comfortable it is. Um, all of these factors combine. And this style of car, a wooden frame, leather interior, wool carpets, wool headlining, it's a very, very different smell to a modern car with all of the plastics that are involved. It's a very different smell even to a 90s car, where, again, there's still a lot of plastics, but the construction techniques and the age and the time on them is, it's made them smell differently. 
So that was a very important factor. And happily, the new door cards are now stable, because the new plywood means we don't need to worry about them falling apart. I mean, as we've handled the, the old backing cards, they are literally falling apart, because they're so damaged. But we've salvaged everything that we can off them. So all of the old hardware is going back on. All of the fixings that we use, the copper rivets, the um, steel tacks, that's all as close as we can get to what would have been used originally. And it hasn't really cost that much money. Um, the boxes of tacks, the, the Lion brand, I think it's Lion brand tacks, there was five or six boxes of those and they cost about three pounds on eBay. The same with the copper rivets, they were very, very cheap from eBay because we didn't need a lot and we were looking at using the same methods as before. It's more labour intensive, but it saved us a lot of money. So I think all in on these door cards, we've probably spent around about £50 to make them completely solid and ready to go back on the car. Um, same with the wood interior, the door cappings, the dashboard. All of that was done fairly cheaply. I, I think that's also around about £50. The seats, again, with the repair work done on the seats, um, I think that was slightly less than it was about £30. I'll check the receipts. We're stupidly keeping receipts on this one. But the whole interior, the most expensive thing left to go is the carpet. That we are going to have to buy new. Thankfully, there are companies that produce old-fashioned wool carpets that look the same, presumably smell the same, and wool carpets are pretty much wool carpets. So that's going to be one of the things we have to replace with new. You sometimes can't get away with it. But the interior, as we are now, is basically ready to be put back together and is essentially finished, bar new carpeting. And since that's little more than what modern car mats are like, that's not a big job. Uh, the brakes need adjusting, of course, because they barely even stop the car. But there's no hydraulics to worry about. It's all mechanical rods, cables, and drums, so it's just a case of going through and adjusting everything. All of the grease points need doing. We know that the engine mounts, something's amiss because the engine is sitting a bit too low. It's not fouling on anything, but you can't get the fan belt off. And from what we've learned, that means the engine mounts are just tired, worn out, so we need to get some of those. Um, and we're still waiting on the wiring loom. We have ordered a new one, but of course, with 2020 being 2020, there's some big delays with the company. They've been good enough to let us know about the delays, so we're not worried, and the weather being what it is, we can't push the car out and do anything with it. The other setback has been the garage roof. We had a big downpour down here recently, and it destroyed the roof. So we had to fork out for a brand new roof on the garage. And that has that's set back things a little bit on savings. My regular car, uh, the Princess, which you'll have seen in other videos. That needs the engine rebuilding, which is just great. So I bought another car because yeah, more on that in a future video. Um, but yeah, that's how you do door cards. This is a ramble on from me for a little bit of time and giving me more practice in front of the camera, which I still find very weird. Thank you for watching and you know how YouTube works and I will see you in a future video, whenever that happens to be. Yeah.